Hey everybody, Martia here, and we want to welcome you to Alive Church Online. Don't forget, you can connect with us on our website, alivefc.org, or Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. If you would like to give financially to our church, or volunteer in some area of ministry, simply go to our website and follow the prompts. And we always want to say thank you for giving to Alive FC. In just a few moments, Pastor Wendell will be sharing with us about the church and why we do certain things. But before we get into that, last week we asked everyone to pray every day, asking God to open a door for a place to call home for our church. We have been a church without walls for some time, but no more. God has done an amazing thing, and now we have a church home. Yes, that's right. You heard me. Don't worry about rewinding. Starting September 20th at 9 a.m. or 1030, and in Spanish at noon, a live fellowship will begin to be a church with walls. Our new address in the Northeast El Paso area will be 5505 Will Ruth. God has blessed us with five and a half acres and 11,000 square feet of church building for us to call home. We sit right between the YMCA and the police substation. We look forward to beginning our church and meeting the needs of Northeast El Paso. Thank you so much for praying. It is because of you and your faithfulness that we are moving forward now. Let's join Pastor Wendell as he talks about the body of Christ, which is the church. Hey church, Pastor Wendell here, and thanks for joining us for Church uh, Online. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of Alive FC, and please continue to check out our website, and we always want to say what a blessing it is for you to be faithful in your tithes and your offerings as we continue to look and work on a location uh, to uh, call home. Uh, yes, we are a church without walls, as you heard, but we are still a church that continues to serve amazing, amazing God. And we have some great things coming. Well, we're continuing our series uh, this morning talking about the body of Christ. And we're talking about the church. Now, we have discovered in this series what it takes to build a church and the work that goes into that. And we've also discovered what should a church be doing. And we've also talked about the pain that sometimes is involved in being a part of a church family. There are a lot of people in church who are hurting. Maybe it's because of depression or a relationship or a family problem. And so we have a lot of people who are hurting inside and outside the church. And, and how should we be helping them? And last week, we discovered the importance of unity within the body of Christ within the church. Now, you'll remember that this entire series is based on the question, when the world sees the body of Christ, uh, when the world sees uh, a live FC, is it a fair and accurate representation of who God is? And we've made this very, very personal. When the world looks at me, when the world looks at you, when the world looks at all of us, are we a fair and accurate representation of who God is? Now, today we're going to talk about something that the church does and why the church does it. Now, about a year ago, my granddaughter comes into town and they want to go have her ears pierced for the very first time time. And of course we go into this place and, and she's a little bit restless. And so I'm holding her because she just loves her gramps. And all of a sudden they put this machine on her ear and, and they pinch it to pierce her ear. And there's like this pause. And it's almost like she's trying to figure out, did they really just do that to me? And then all of a sudden, this is this, there is this scream that is just going out from my little granddaughter. And it was crazy. I was holding her during all of this. Now, I have never had a piercing, so I don't know how much pain is involved, but it just looks like it wasn't a whole lot of fun. But I want to talk about how a piercing saved my life. A, a piercing healed my body. A piercing delivered me and set me free. A, a piercing took my sin and yours and destroyed it. A piercing branded me, marked me to be a child of God. 
Now, in order for us to be the body of Christ and accepted into God's family, some pretty serious body piercing had to take place. I'm going to read you a passage of Scripture in Isaiah 53 talking about body piercing. Chapter 53 of Isaiah, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says this, Yet it was our weakness He carried. It was our sorrows that weighed Him down. And we thought His troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for His own sins. And in verse 5 it says, But He was pierced, wounded we could say, for our rebellion, crushed, beat to pieces for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. And then in verse 6 it says, All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on Him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet He never said a word. He was led like a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep in silent before the shears. He did not open His mouth, and in verse 8, unjustly condemned, He was led away. Now, now think about this. What an amazing picture and description of the mission of Jesus Christ on the cross. You see, the very foundation of Alive FC, the very core belief of the faith in, in, in our uh, life is a belief in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross. You see, Jesus took our place. He, he took our sin, our sorrows, our punishment. He took our weaknesses upon Himself so we could walk in freedom, so we could be free and have an eternity with Him. Now, one of the ways that Jesus challenges us to remember what He did on the cross. One of the ways that He challenges us to remember the sacrifice that He did on the cross is through communion, or we could say the Lord's Supper, and perhaps you've taken the Lord's Supper and communion at your uh, church. Communion is a major part of our church body. Now, the truth is, it is at times too easy to take communion, the Lord's Supper, and not really understand what we are doing and, and why we're doing it. It simply becomes a tradition, maybe, maybe a habit, like all the, other church are, all the other churches are doing it. And so today, I want to break it down for us. I, I want to be able to give it purpose and meaning as to why we take the Lord's Supper, why we participate in communion. Now, in order to understand how important the Lord's Supper is and how, communion, how important communion is, we need to get a background to really understand it. So, on the night before Jesus' death, he gathered all of his disciples together, and they're going to eat this Passover meal. Now, remember, God instituted the Passover meal when he delivered the people from the years of slavery in Egypt. Now, this meal celebrated the death's angels passing over the houses of those doorposts or lentils that were smeared with the lamb's blood. Now, throughout all of Israel's history, they celebrated this Passover meal in remembrance of what the Lord delivered them from in Egypt. So when we receive communion, when we take communion and we uh, uh, participate in the Lord's Supper, we are demonstrating our belief in Jesus Christ. We are demonstrating the fact that He is uh, sinless and He lived a sinless life and that His blood uh, was atonement for all of our sins. So communion is, is a public announcement that we believe in Jesus Christ, that we believe in the deity of Christ and the substitutionary death of Jesus. And taking communion is, is a spiritual rededication of the truth of salvation that all of us believed in. So it's a very vital thing to do together as a church body, as the body of Christ. Now somebody might say, well, well why? Well, you see, Jesus gave His body. He gave up His entire life for us. In other words, Jesus said, I will become man. I will become man for you. I will suffer for you. I will die for you. And Jesus loves us so much, and He died for us. Now, whether a person wants to receive that benefit, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross is entirely up to that person. But Jesus made it. He offered it for every person. And because of that, we celebrate it. Because of that, we celebrate what He did through communion. Now, Jesus, did you know that Jesus never told us to celebrate His birth? But He did say, remember His death. 
And we do that when we take communion, when we partake of the Lord's Supper. Take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It's been the foundational passage uh, that we've been dealing with. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 11. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this, now look, to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup... Uh, of the Lord in an unworthy way, in an unworthy manner, is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And then in verse 28, that is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread and drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. And so today, what I want to do is I want to give you seven insights, seven thoughts about the Lord's Supper, about the communion about why we do it and why it's important. And the first one is an insight and a thought about it is that it's a time of association, knowing who we are associating with. In verse 23, it says, For I pass on to you what I receive from the Lord himself. So Paul starts his instructions by revealing that, that these truths, this, this principle that he is showing us, came directly from the Lord. Uh, in other words, Paul didn't get it from another apostle. Uh, Paul didn't get it from some tradition or anything like that. It's important to remember, it's very important to remember that 1 Corinthians was written before any of the Gospels, which means this is the first biblical record of the institution of the Lord's Supper, of communion. And so what was Jesus doing? What was he doing when he put this into practice, when he instituted this into practice? Well, he was enjoying a Passover meal with his friends. And so that's what we do, is we are associating with Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, the truth is, Jesus wants us to come and to be with him, to hang out with him, not just to throw up a bunch of prayers and run out the door. So when we take communion, we are remembering our association with Him. And just like we have friends and people that we associate with, people who have helped us, who have done something with us, we hang out with them and we talk to them, and it shows that we associate with them. So Jesus gave up His life for us, and He enjoys being with us in the same way that you would enjoy being with your close friends. And remember, James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Come near to God, and He will come near to you. Now, I want you to think about something. Think about what it means to commune with God. The word commune means to converse or to talk, usually with intensity or intimacy. And that's what He is doing with His disciples. He is hanging out with them. In other words, to commune is to open your heart, to open your mind, to open your spirit to God, and to completely be aware of His presence. And so here's what I want you to think about. If Jesus were next to you right now, what would you want to talk to Him about? What would you want to share with Him? Would it be the, the pain that you're in? Would it be the, the hurt? Would it be the fear that you're experiencing? What would you want to talk to Jesus about right now? Because we associate with Him. So when we take communion, we are associating with Jesus Christ. It is also a time of reflection. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 says this, And gave thanks to God for it. Then He broke it into pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Reflection. The thinking about Verse 25, in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me. Do you ever take the time to go back and reflect on something? Maybe you go back and reflect on your, your college days. 
Maybe you go back and reflect on when uh, your kids were born or, or your family or vacations or great things that you have done and have enjoyed. And when we take communion, it's a time of reflecting and remembering what Christ went through. What he went through for me and what he went through for you. Now, eating the bread reminds us of the terrible pain that he endured because of our sin. And the juice reminds us of the blood that flowed from him to pay the price for our sins. It's a very powerful reminder and symbol of what Jesus has done for us. The cross is a very powerful reminder. And when we take communion, it's a time of reflecting about what Jesus did on the cross. You know, the cross is very, very important. I read this story of a lady who uh, went into this jewelry store and she was wanting to buy a gold cross. So she goes up to the uh, clerk at the counter and she asks this man, she says, I'm looking for a gold cross. The guy looks around for a second, he comes back and he says, do you want a plain one or the one with a little man on it? See, that gentleman had no clue what that man on a cross really represents. And when we take communion, we are reflecting on that. You see, the truth is we all sin over and over again. And when we take communion, we are remembering the sacrifice that he made. In Hebrews 10.10 10 says, For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. And so all throughout the Bible, we see things that communion, when we take the Lord's Supper, it helps us to remember. Uh, so when we take communion, it's a time to remember that Jesus left heaven. He left heaven to be born in a human body. He took our place on the cross. He conquered death for us forever. He shed His blood for our redemption. He became poor so that we might be rich. He took our sins in His own body. He went back to heaven. He went back to heaven to finish His redemptive work and to serve as our high priest forever. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says this, verse 21, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. And I love this verse in the, out of the Message Bible in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 22. I've wiped the slate of all of your wrongdoings. There's nothing left of your sins. Come back to me. Come back. I have redeemed you. Because Jesus Christ was pierced. Because he was pierced, we can go home to God. Psalms tells us that our sins have been removed. Jesus blots out our sins and remembers them no more. And when we take communion, we reflect on that. And so here's my thought. If Jesus was next to you right now, how would you feel about the sacrifice that he made? As you were to look into his eyes right now, how would you feel and what would you remember about the price that he paid so that you and I could have an eternity? So communion is a time of association. It is also a time of reflection. And it's also a time of appreciation. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 17 and 19, it says this, Then he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Now, even in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic, it's been very difficult, but even in the middle of this pandemic, we have so much to be thankful for. For. Uh, for some, it's, it's, it's their job stayed with them. Uh, for others, it's they were able to stay in their home. We're thankful for our families and for health. I'm thankful for our church. I'm thankful for the amazing door that God has opened for us to be a part of a church family and have a location that we'll be at in just a couple weeks. There are so many things to be thankful for for and appreciate God for. Sure, I get it. Things don't always turn out the way we want them to. And there are many things that we struggle with understanding, but there are so many blessings that are poured out on us each day. Psalms 95 verse 2 says it this way, let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him for the Lord is a great God. If Jesus was next to you right now, what would you tell him that you're thankful for. 
If he was with you right now, what would you tell him that you're thankful for? And so when we take communion, it's a time of association. It's a time of reflection. It's a time of appreciating. And it's also a time of identification. You see, communion identifies us with Christ. It says that I'm a part of the body of Christ. Uh, communion proclaims that I'm a believer, a, a follower of Jesus Christ. It really is a public, a public declaration of our faith. Now, in this series, we've talked about our physical bodies. Now, think about it. The only way to be connected to the head is to be a part of the body. You remember when we talked about the body of Christ, we are talking about the church. And as a follower of Christ, we should be connected to the church just like a real family is connected. And so if you're connected to God, you are also connected to His people. Church should be an important part of that. It would be crazy for one of my kids to come up to me and simply say, Dad, I want to have a relationship with you, but I don't want to have anything to do with my brothers and sisters. And you see, we are a family. If you want a relationship with God, we cannot deny the existence of other brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are not in competition with any of them. We are working together, and we want to work together with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because of Romans chapter 1, verse 16. We're not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now listen to what it says. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. And that is our desire, that everybody in El Paso, everybody in Northeast El Paso, all across the world, would hear the saving message of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ were with you right now, right next to you, who would you tell him needs to hear the news of Jesus Christ? How would you pray for that person? The, the, the people that are in your circle of influence, uh, a, a family member, a, a, a friend. Uh, who would you invite to church? Communion is a time that we associate with God, we reflect on what He has done, we appreciate everything that He has done for us, we identify with Him, and then it's also a time of introspection, a time of looking in, having a deep look inside of our own lives. The word introspection is defined a, a view of the inside or interior, a looking inward, specifically the act or process of a self-examination or inspection of our own thoughts and feelings. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, 28, it says, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink the cup. And so when we take communion, it also is a time of not only association and reflection, but it's a time of looking deep in ourselves. And we ought to go through a thorough self-examination looking honestly at our hearts, looking honestly at anything that shouldn't be there. We're looking for any sort of evil, any sort of motive. Maybe it's an attitude towards God or it's an attitude towards other people. We are looking at all of that. And when we take communion, we have to be open and we have to be honest with God and ourselves. We can't just glance over it. We can't just, just sweep it under the rug. We can't just look onto the surface of our lives and assume that everything is just perfect. We need to evaluate the condition of our life and our relationship with God and our relationship with others. Are there things that need to be there? Are there things that don't need to be there? Are there some things that we need to make right? What can I do better? What needs to change? Now, here's a great verse to think about. It's found in 2 Corinthians 13, and the Amplified Bible says it this way. Test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Now, we're not called to judge anybody. That, that, that's left up to God. But the Bible tells us, test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. Now, look what it says. Examine yourselves. Don't examine me. I'm not going to examine you. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected, you're kind of just a counterfeit. During communion, we should be examining ourselves with questions like this. Is my life pleasing to the Lord? Is there any hidden thing in my life that needs to be dealt with? Is there, is there any problem between me and another person? 
that I need to make right with that person. Yes, even if it is my spouse. Yes, even if it is one of my kids. Uh, can I honestly say that my, my heart and my life have a desire to be pure and I'm working on that daily? And church, if there are some, some of those things in our lives, we need to make them right with God. We need to make them right with God. And before you take communion, make them right with God so that we can be ready to receive the bread and the juice with a heart of true worship for God, the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And church, we don't need to be afraid of making things right with God. Now I want you to think about something. We don't need to be afraid of making things right with God. And there's really two reasons why. Number one, He already knows everything. He already knows everything. And then number two, God promises us that He forgives us of our sins when we come to Him. If Jesus was next to you right now, what are the adjustments that we would need to make in our life? It's a time of association, reflection, appreciation, identifying, looking inward, and it's also a time of purification. When we take communion, we are demonstrating our love and respect for Jesus Christ. And we use this time to share your commitment to live for Jesus. 1 John 1 says it this way, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now watch. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We need to ask, what do I need to confess to God? What areas of my life do I need to surrender to Him? And then it's also a time of expectation. One of the most exciting verses in all of the Bible is found in Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Listen to this. It says that this, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back will come back in the same way you have seen Him go into heaven. Communion. And when we take communion as a church, and when you take communion as a church, it's a time to think and wonder and ponder the return of Christ. Now, now nobody knows when Jesus Christ is coming back, but here's what we do know. We are one day closer today than we were yesterday. And tomorrow, we will be one day closer are we looking forward to that? It's a time of getting excited that Jesus is coming back. It's a time to allow our thoughts to think about heaven. And John 14, 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. And also in 1 Thessalonians, it says, The Lord Himself will come down from heaven with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. And it ends with the command to encourage one another with these words. So we encourage each other to look forward to Jesus Christ coming again. And that's why it's so important that we share the message of Jesus Christ. If we knew that Jesus was coming back two months from today. Two months from today. How would it change the way we live? Jesus pierced His body for all of us. He sacrificed it all. And communion is our way of remembering what He did. And so maybe the question is, what do I need to sacrifice in my life to give my life to Jesus? What do I need to forfeit? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to relinquish control of so that I can have a greater value of knowing Him? Whatever it is. It's pride. It's finances. It's wanting to be my own boss. Let's be a people who are willing to give it all up to Him. Give it all up because of what He did on the cross. And that's why the church celebrates communion. Because all of that stuff He did for us. And so when we take communion, we remember that. It's a time of reflecting and simply saying, God, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today online. And much 
like Amartya said, we have some exciting news. Our new location is coming, and we're just a couple weeks away, and you'll be hearing so much more about it. We look forward to seeing you there on September the 20th. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week with Church Online.